the 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro. Still powerful, still portable, but with the release of Apple's latest M4 processor, is the M3 still worth it in 2025? Let's find out. From the moment you unbox this MacBook, it gives off such a premium and refined look. The 14 inch MacBook Pro really is a masterclass in industrial design, premium materials, precision engineering, and an aesthetic that feels both modern and timeless. The silver finish in particular has been a standout for me. It's a subtle evolution of Apple's classic silver and the contrast between the black keyboard and the silver aluminium chassis is definitely Definitely my favourite part of this design. Visually striking, creating a sleek, high-end look that feels just as premium as it appears. And for those who, like me, have a Silver Studio display, this MacBook complements it perfectly. For those considering the Space Black variant, I have spent time using that Mac also. It's a bold and striking alternative, and under certain lighting, it almost looks like deep graphite rather than a true black. Apple's new anodization process does help resist fingerprints, but despite this, the finish isn't completely immune to smudges, which is the only real drawback when going for the darker variant, as opposed to this silver option. Beyond aesthetics, the build quality is exceptional. The solid aluminium construction gives the MacBook Pro a reassuring weight, not too heavy, but substantial enough to feel like a professional grade machine. The 14 inch form factor hits the perfect balance between power and portability. It's compact enough to carry effortlessly in a backpack, yet large enough to deliver an immersive experience when working for extended periods. For my personal workflow, this is the sweet spot. The 16 inch is great for those who need the biggest display possible, but I found that the 14 inch provides that ideal mix of portability and power. Now, this may be controversial, but if I could change one thing about this design, I feel like I would bring back the touch bar in some capacity. I know this feature was divisive, but I was one of the few who actually found it useful and cool. It added something unique to a form factor that hasn't really changed all that much. Contextual controls for different apps, quick access to shortcuts, and even adjusting settings like screen brightness or volume with a swipe. It was genuinely such a cool idea in my opinion. Apple seemed to have made it clear that the touch bar is gone for good, but I genuinely am curious. Is anyone out there still wishing for this to return or is this just me? Let me know in the comments below. The Liquid Retina XDR display on this 14 inch MacBook Pro is simply one of the best displays on any laptop today. With its mini LED technology, 1000 nits sustained brightness, 1600 nits peak HDR brightness and P3 wide colour gamut, it delivers incredible contrast, rich colours and deep blacks, perfect for content creation. Whether I'm editing videos, colour grading or just consuming media, the accuracy and vibrancy of this panel never disappoint. At 120Hz with ProMotion, everything from scrolling to video playback is buttery smooth, while True Tone ensures a natural viewing experience in any lighting condition. And while the notch was controversial at launch, in practice it disappears into macOS and there has never really been an issue in my work. Workflow. The main difference between this Mac's display and the one shipping with the new M4 MacBook Pro is that nano texture glass is now available as an option. If you're someone who prefers matte displays or works in an environment where glare reduction is essential, this could be one of the few reasons to consider the M4 over the M3. Now, when it comes to display size, I opted for the 14 inch variant and I couldn't be happier with my decision. As a content creator, I do a lot of video 
video editing and while a larger display is beneficial for that, I pair my MacBook Pro with the studio display which provides the extra screen real estate I need for intensive editing sessions. However, there are plenty of times when I work directly on the MacBook's display and despite being more compact than the 16 inch model, I find the trade-offs well worth it. The lighter design makes it easier to carry around especially when traveling or working in tight spaces like on an aeroplane. For lighter tasks like scripting or browsing, the 14 inch screen is more than sufficient. That said, if you rely solely on your MacBook's built-in display with no external monitor, that's where the 16 inch model becomes much more appealing. The extra screen real estate makes a real difference for timeline based work like video editing or multitasking across multiple windows. For me, the 14 inch model just strikes the perfect balance. Powerful enough for pro level tasks, portable enough for everyday use and seamlessly integrates with my studio display for larger projects. If you're someone who is constantly on the move, this setup is an ideal combination of versatility and performance. At the heart of this specific MacBook Pro is the M3 Pro chip. And after more than a year of real world use, I can confidently say it's more than powerful enough for my workflow. Whether I'm editing high resolution video or multitasking with multiple pro apps open simultaneously, this machine never skips a beat. Apple silicon efficiency continues to impress and no matter how much I push this Mac, it just handles everything effortlessly. This is exactly why I see no reason to upgrade to the M4 Pro anytime soon. Yes, the M4 chips will bring improvements, but for most Pro users, including myself, the M3 Pro already delivers incredible performance. If you're someone who demands serious power, but doesn't necessarily need the absolute latest, this MacBook Pro still stands as a top tier choice in 2025. Now, when it comes to battery life, I've had an equally positive experience. Apple claims up to 18 hours, and while real-world usage varies, I've found this MacBook to be one of the longest-lasting laptops I've ever used. The efficiency of Apple Silicon means I can get through a full day of work without reaching for the charger, especially when doing lighter tasks like scripting, browsing, or just responding to emails. That being said, my workflow is a little different. Since I'm constantly hooked to my studio display, which charges the MacBook while plugged in, battery life has never been a concern for me. The MagSafe charging is a great addition when I do need to charge on the go, but for the most part, my Mac stays topped up automatically throughout the day. For anyone considering the 14 inch MacBook Pro, battery life will only be a concern if you're constantly on the move and running intensive tasks unplugged. But for my use case, it's been outstanding. Despite the release of the M4 chip inside Apple's latest MacBook Pro lineup, the M3 Pro is still more than capable of handling pro level tasks without any issues. The premium design, stunning display and impressive battery life make it a powerhouse that holds its own even against newer models. If you're someone who needs a portable, powerful laptop for creative work, the 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro remains a top top contender. If you're looking to upgrade and you know you need the extra power the M4 Pro is offering, then you certainly won't be disappointed with Apple's latest machines. But if you know the M3 will be good enough and you find one at a discounted price, the M3 Pro is still an incredible deal and will serve you for years to come. I really cannot recommend this machine enough. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below and if you are still watching up to now then hit the thumbs up button and think about subscribing to the channel to see lots more content like this. For now though, thanks for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.